The White House has said preparations for a meeting between U.S. President Donald Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin will not be affected by sweeping U.S. sanctions on Russian government officials and businessmen. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders said U.S. officials would continue to work towards toward meeting uh, with Putin at some point. The White House has said it is considering sending more than 4,000 National Guard troops to the border with Mexico and will continue to work with California, which has resisted President Donald Trump's call to use the reserve military to support the border patrol. Five buses carrying hundreds of Central American migrants across Mexico near the city of Puebla on Friday in southern Mexico, from where they set off in search of legal protections. London Police Chief Cressida Dick has said the Metropolitan Police has not lost control of streets after six stabbings in a matter of hours in the UK capital. She said that 200 extra officers would be on patrol at the weekend in the hot spots for knife crime. U.S. National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster was met with rounds of applause from staff members on the White House grounds on Friday as he bid farewell on his last day. President Donald Trump shook up his foreign policy team when he announced in March he would replace H.R. McMaster as National Security Advisor with John Bolton, a hawk who has advocated using military force against North Korea and Iran. Supporters of Brazil's former president Lula da Silva rallied outside the Steelworkers' Union building in Sao Paulo, where Lula is believed to be. This comes as a top appeals court rejected a request that the former president will stay out of prison until he has exhausted all appeals. Protesters against Brazil's former president Lula da Silva gathered outside federal police headquarters in Curitiba after Lula defied a judge's order to turn himself into police. Demonstrators chanted and waved flags against Lula, who remained holed up inside headquarters of a steelworkers' union. Federal, pol federal police in Sao Paulo declined to say if they would attempt to forcibly take the former president into custody, a move that could trigger intense clashes with his supporters. Brazil's former president defied a judge's order to turn himself into police and start serving a 12-year prison sentence for bribery that likely ends his bid to return to the presidency. However, his legal team was negotiating his surrender with federal police. Cuba and Bolivia have expressed their support for Brazil's former president Lula da Silva as he faces mounting legal pressure to turn himself in to serve a 12-year prison sentence for bribery. Dozens of Lula supporters camped outside the Brazilian embassy in Bolivia to show their support for Lula after Bolivian president Evo Morales criticized the ruling ordering Lula to prison. Urgenti Argentines took to the streets of Buenos Aires gathering at the Brazilian embassy to support former pr uh, Brazilian President Lula da Silva as he remains on the cusp of facing jail time. Men, women and children chanted, sang and carried banners in support of Lula. Former Argentine foreign minister said he had been condemned without proof. Mixed martial arts fighter Conor McGregor was freed on $50,000 bail after appearing in a New York City courtroom on charges of assault stemming from a melee following a press event for a series of UFC fights to be staged at a Brooklyn arena. The Kuwaiti and Palestinian ambassadors to the United Nations have condemned the killing of Palestinian protesters by Israeli troops at Gaza border. 
Israeli troops shot dead seven Palestinian protesters and wounded at least 200 along the Israel-Gaza border on Friday, raising the death toll to 27 in the week-long disturb uh, disturbances. Palestinians filmed scenes at the border between the Gaza Strip and Israel to document and share a day of violence on social media. One woman at the border at Jabalia in Gaza gave men carbon water to minimize the effects of tear gas. Large groups of youths ventured much closer to the no-go zone along the barrier, risking live fire from Israeli troops to roll burning tires and throw stones. Israeli army has circulated a video that claimed to show a Palestinian trying to cut the fence at the border between the Gaza Strip and Israel during protests. Gazans including Palestinian refugees and their descendants uh, seeking to regain ancestral homes in what is now Israel have set up tents a few hundred meters out inside 65 kilometer fence that separates Israel from the Gaza Strip. The, United, uh, the UN Human Rights Office has called on Israel to prevent further loss of life in renewed demonstrations planned in Gaza. Spokesperson for the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights said Israel had obligations under international law to ensure that excessive force was not used against protesters. Israeli army distributed video on Friday that they say shows a Palestinian trying to cut the fence at the border between the Gaza Strip and Israel. Large groups of youths have ventured much closer to the no-go zone along the barrier, risking live fire from Israeli troops to roll burning tires and throw stones. Andre Lopez, the leftist leading the race to win Mexico's presidency in July, will root out corruption at Pemex and also aims to slim down the state-owned oil and gas company. His pick for finance minister has said Carlo Urruza, an economist, had harsh words for Pemex, saying it was neither competitive nor productive enough and adding that its trade union is an icon of corruption. Panama President Juan Carlos has said the suspension of Copa Airlines flights between Venezuela and Panama will affect Venezuelan people more. Venezuela said on Thursday it was halting commercial relations with Panamanian officials and com companies including regional airline Copa for alleged involvement in money laundering, prompting both countries to recall their ambassadors. Government forces carried out airstrikes and pushed into the last remaining rebel-held enclave in the Syrian town of Douma. The airstrikes killed at least 27 people, including five children. Newly elected French Socialist Party leader Olivier Faure will officially take office today with the challenge of deeply renewing his breathless party. Faure has, was also was elected as head of the party on March 30th gathering, 48.5% 40, of the members votes. He vowed to reinvent his political party crushed by recent electoral defeats. A French company is hoping to convince the world that a clear sphere, a little over a meter in diameter, is the solution to the world's water crisis. The company that makes the spheres expects there to be a 50% increase in the demand for fresh drinking water by 2030, with many countries already suffering severe shortages. Viktor Orban, Europe's most outspoken nationalist leader, said Hungary's future would be decided for decades at an election on Sunday in which he vowed to protect his nation from the rust of Muslim migrants. Hungarian opposition socialist candidate 
held a campaign closing rally in Budapest ahead of parliamentary elections on Sunday, telling supporters that current Prime Minister Viktor Orban had abused his strong political mandate. A gigantic crack has appeared in the Rift Valley of Kenya, forcing families to flee this area. This is a harsh reminder that the tourist hotspot sits on some of the most unstable ground on the continent. Videos show the fault lines stretching across the landscape. Lebanon won aid pledges exceeding $11 billion at a Paris conference aimed at rallying international support for an investment program to boost its economy. French President Emmanuel Macron said the aid aims to give Lebanon a fresh start. Pakistani Prime Minister Shahid Khakan Abbasi visited Kabul on Friday to hold face-to-face -face talks with President Ashraf Ghani, the latest in a series of engagements aimed at reducing mistrust between the two neighbours. The visit comes a day after Afghanistan accused Pakistan of airstrikes causing huge financial damages in its province of Kunar bordering Pakistan. Top U.S., Mexican and Canadian trade officials met on Friday to discuss prospects for a deal to update NAFTA amid pressure from Washington to strike a quick agreement despite several unresolved issues. No time limit has been set for the Washington talks between U.S. Trade Representative, Mexican Economy Minister and Canadian Foreign Minister. The hospital treating the former Russian spy Sergei Skripal has said he is no longer in a critical condition and that his health is improving rapidly. Skripal was poisoned with a nerve agent in England a month ago. After weeks of no reported change in his condition, the hospital confirmed that Skripal, who had been treated under heavy sedation, was now making fast progress. Russian Security Council Secretary said that Moscow's contacts with the United States government would not be brought to an end by new U.S. sanctions. The comments came after a meeting of the Security Council which, has chaired, which was chaired by Russian President Vladimir Putin and focused on border controls. China's foreign ministry spokesperson has said Beijing will fight back without any hesitation if the United States announces a list of additional tariffs on imported Chinese products. U.S. President Donald Trump on Thursday said that he had asked the U.S. Trade Representative to consider 100 billion U.S. dollars of additional tariffs on Chinese products. U.S. retailers have urged President Donald Trump to rein in his threat to slap additional tariffs on Chinese goods, warning that a trade war would be disastrous for the U.S. economy. Including consumers, China also has also warned it was fully prepared to respond with a fierce counter-strike of fresh trade measures if the United States follows through on President Donald Trump's warning. White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow has said talks between the United States and China over trade issues are ongoing but did not specify at what level the negotiations were occurring. He said the ongoing talks may solve a lot of problems and both nations are very serious in this regard. The U.S. Federal Reserve Chairman has said that there is a need to keep raising interest rates to keep inflation under control. He also said it was too soon to know if rising trade tensions would hit the U.S. economy. In his first speech on the economic outlook since assuming office at the U.S. Central Bank on February 5th, he said that the labor market appeared close to full employment. The Indian government has kicked off the process to procure 110 fighter jets for the Air Force. This will be one of the world's biggest defence procurements by a government. The Indian Defence Ministry has issued an initial request for information to global aviation companies.
Multiple Indian government sites were down hours after the Indian Defence Ministry website became inaccessible. In a statement, the government said that as many as 10 websites went offline after a technical issue in server storage. The websites were later restored. India's finance minister Arun Jaitley is expected to undergo a kidney transplant surgery over the weekend. Jaitley tweeted earlier this week that he was suffering from kidney-related infections and that his treatment would be determined by his doctors. On the second day of his visit to India, Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli will be hosted by his Indian, Indian counterpart, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The two leaders will also be holding delegation-level talks. Issues of energy, trade and essential commodities are expected to come up for discussion. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi led the Bharatiya Janata Party and opposition parties blamed each other for the washout of the entire budget session in Parliament. Repeated protests in both the houses led to frequent adjournments and making this one of the least productive Parliament sessions since 2000. The Central Bureau of Investigation questioned a former Deputy Government of the Reserve Bank of India, H.R. Khan, as part of an investigation into a $2 billion fraud at state-run Punjab National Bank. Sources claimed that they were not suspected of wrongdoing and had been asked to explain how banking processes work. Two days after he was awarded five-year jail sentence, India's film star Salman Khan bails. Salman Khan's bail application will be heard by a court in Jaipur. The Indian superstar has been convicted in a black buck killing case in 1998. The Handloom Development Department in Jammu and Kashmir's Lake is providing free training with stipend to the unemployed youngsters of the state to make them self-dependent. The training serves a dual purpose of making the youth self-dependent as well as preserving the local traditional art of weaving pashmina and spinning. Despite a Supreme Court order, there has been no respite to Tamil Nadu farmers. Farmers in uh, Tiruchirappalli buried themselves neck deep in sand on the banks of Kaveri River to protest the delay in constitution of a board that would have ensured timely release of water to the state. Now let's take you through some stories from the world of sport. We start with the Commonwealth Games where India's Sanjita Chanu has claimed her second weightlifting gold medal by winning the 53 kg title. Chanu, who won the women's 48 kg in the 2014 edition in Glasgow, lifted a combined total of 192 kgs to pip defending champion Dika Tuato to the gold. She becomes the only second Indian woman weightlifter after Kunjarani Devi to win gold at consecutive Commonwealth Games. 18-year-old Deepak, Deepak Lata claimed the bronze medal in the men's 69kg event in what was his debut appearance at the Commonwealth Games. The youngster from Haryana who had also won the bronze medal at last year's Commonwealth champion, uh, uh, champion lifted 136kg in snatch and lifted 159kg in the clean and jerk to finish third behind Welsh gold medalist Gareth Evans and Sri Lanka's Indika Disanyake.